Hi, I'm Sophie Patterson. Welcome to my Sherlock's home tour. Come on in. This is our formal sitting room. We use it quite a lot at the weekends um, after Ava's gone to bed. It's not a very kid-friendly room, but um, after she's gone to bed, we'll come in here. There's no TV, so we just listen to music, put the fire on. Um, it's a really nice, relaxing space. And then if we have large social gatherings, this is where we always have it, because there's so many seats. Um, it really comes into its own at Christmas. Um, this is where, at home for Christmas, we'll open all the presents in here, have drinks parties. So it's not a room that we use all the time, but it's quite a nice room. We've got a lot of space memories in her. On coffee tables I tend to always put a mixture of books, candles, um, faux flowers and then I always like to put a few interesting objects so I've got an antique blue and white vase, um, a shower green box that I use to hide all my remote controls in, yeah and then like some coasters and in here I really wanted to maximise seating and then I actually added furniture as time went on because on a floor plan this would look too squashed. I'm very into fabrics and colours obviously so then I'll sort of allocate different colours and sort of think about how I'm going to spread the colour scheme around the room because I like to use mostly neutral colour schemes. So the colour that I do use I want to make sure it's balanced so it's not all on just one side and then obviously all the really beautiful fabrics go on the cushions because you can spend a bit more money and do a lot more pattern and be a bit braver with those fabrics whereas all the main upholstery pieces are quite plain but textured. So this is one of my multiple agate slices, well this is actually a bookend and I like this one because it picks out all the colours in the room so you've got the creams, the blues and then the darker tones that I've got all the wood works quite nicely. And I always have a mix of objects so this is faux coral, a pile of some um, coffee table books that I'm trying to read and then some faux plants. I'm always trying to find unusual looking items. And then this lamp is from Porta Romana, love this. On my coffee table I always have a mix of books and again I'm really like anal and pick books that go with all the decor and um, so I tend to have a couple of books closed and then I try and have one open this is an amazing book if you want to do an open book and it's just got stunning photography so just pick a page that works with your interiors some really beautiful images it's almost like having artwork in your room so this is one of my more um, glamorous Christmas trees my top three tips for Christmas tree decorations is number one always have some sparkle even if it's not your normal style embrace some glitz and sparkle and bling for Christmas because it looks really good when the Christmas trees lit up number two is um, you can mix different metal finishes so gold and silver are absolutely fine on a tree so number three i like to fill my tree so it's literally dripping with baubles and obviously you can't have everything really special so buy multi-packs of plain baubles that are much cheaper and then have every year if you can try and buy a couple of really special ones over five years you'll build up a really beautiful tree now we love a karate chop on our um, cushions spi so karate chopping is a three-stage process you have to bang the top to space out all the feathers um, and make sure they're evenly spaced. Then you karate chop the sides to give it some extra volume. And finally, just one karate chop in the middle of the cushion on the top. This is my favorite room in the house. We tend to spend most of our time in here. I love the fact that it's so open plan, so when I'm cooking I don't feel left out of all the action. I spent a lot of time sort of space planning the kitchen so that it would be practical for more than one person cooking in it so you don't get on top of each other. And one of the things I like best in here is the fact that it's got the mirrored splashback so when you're sat at the bar stalls having breakfast you can see the reflection into the garden which is really nice. Gone for a um, grey oak cabinet and I went for a very sort of plain cabinet on purpose because I wanted to make sure it wouldn't date too much. It feels really cohesive with the rest of the house so that all the internal doors are this grey oak panel door um, but it ties in perfectly because we've used the same stain. So these light fixtures I get asked about all the time. The house is always changing but it started off quite contemporary in here and then I've made it more rustic over time and I quite like how it sort of brings the outside in. It's got an indoor outdoor vibe and then you I had to sort of try and find a really nice looking light bulb because that was quite a struggle for a time. Find something that would look nice being exposed. One of the best things I like about this room is the chimney breast that I built for the TV. It adds a lot of architectural interest, but it's a great way of making the TV less dominant in the space as well. So I've recessed it slightly into the chimney breast and then clad it in a grass cloth wall covering. And then the floating shelves on either side. Quite a nice way I change up the accessories throughout the year so it always feels sort of fresh and relevant. And then there's loads of storage underneath all of those are drawers full of old DVDs that I still manage to clear out. This is my TV room. This is where we end up most nights falling asleep on the sofa. I'm very into comfortable interiors. I think the more you sort of live in 
houses and do up houses for yourself, you realise how important comfort and practicality is. So this room was very much inspired by a stage when I was desperate to buy a cottage in the Cotswolds. And I love the Cotswolds, but realistically I was never actually going to go there. I just think I wanted to do it up. So I've ended up creating a sort of Cotswold inspired um, TV room here instead. All the pieces are custom made in here. I've got a few of my favourite petrified logs and it's just very sort of heavy on texture. There's hardly any colour, but all the textures are very sort of tactile and satisfying to look at. This is Ava's bedroom, after the kitchen, well, joint favourite room in the house, I'd say. I've gone for a very sort of light, dusty pink. I didn't want to have anything too bright or too babyish, so hopefully this will grow with her. It's a real sort of mix of styles as well, so I've got very mid-century chandelier with the more relaxed, sort of rustic armchair, with again, with the skirt design. And I've done a custom sofa bed here, which worked really well when Ava was a little baby and I had to sleep in here. Um, it's just got a, a normal mattress on top but then you can dress it to look like a sofa when you're not sleeping in it. The artwork's all by Sharon Montrose who is a photographer based in America. I've done some picture shelves. This is something that Ikea does in white. I wanted to have it in the matching sort of grey oak finish that I've got everywhere in this room. I had those custom made but it's a nice idea for displaying the baby's books. The um, rocking horse was a gift from my dad to Ava on her first Christmas and I just love it. It's really more of a gift for me. It's the kind of thing that you can keep forever. Um, and again, that was all customised and normally they do that on a normal unfinished oak base, but I picked um, a stain to match the rest of the furniture. This is our master bedroom. It's absolutely massive. I think it spans about a third of the first floor. So it's got a sleeping bedroom area, a sitting area, his and her bathrooms and his and her dressing rooms. I made a really conscious decision. I changed the layout of the house when I found it and took one of the guest bedrooms to become my dressing room. Just because I think for us, we've only got Ava. We don't need to have a huge amount of bedrooms and we really wanted to have separate space. And I think that's a trend that's happening more and more in high-end residential design is people are sort of creating these master super suites because at the end of the day, it's your house so you want to have the most amount of space. I started with the De Gournay Blossom Wallpaper which was something I'd always loved. I'd sort of had it on my wish list for years. And instead of doing it around the whole room, which I think could have been quite busy, I've just done it on the headboard wall. I don't tend to do statement wallpaper walls. I don't really like it on the whole, but I think you can make an exception when it's hand painted. It'd be so expensive as well. I don't really mind where something's from. I'm not a design snob. It doesn't have to be designer. I just like a real mix of things. I think that is something you can see in the house. Like I've got antique pieces mixed next to really contemporary pieces. So for beds, I always do a bedspread and I try and make it quite heavy because it will sort of weigh the duvet down and look neat and tidy even if you haven't done a really great job of ironing the duvet cover. I used to go for a lot more cushions on the bed before. I haven't really got time to arrange like six cushions in the morning so now I just go for three really oversized ones. For bed linen, this is from Visa V um, and I love herringbone. I really love this one but I also get a lot of bed linen from the White Company. For bedside tables, one of my best tips ever is even if you're in a small bedroom and you can't fit a really wide bedside table, like I couldn't fit a really wide one here because this is an emperor bed, um, make your bedside table tables if you can make them custom make them extra deep because you'll get so much more storage so then you can put the lamp at the back and you've still got room for your water bottles or your alarm clock or whatever it is that you want at the front this is my dressing room i've done an upholstered door i don't really like to do a lot of timber wardrobe doors because i feel like they can be quite oppressive especially in a feminine space like this. So I've chosen a um, wool upholstery fabric. I've gone for an antique brass accent color in here. And again, this room is very much a, a work in progress. I'm gonna add some wallpaper in here, some beautiful chinoiserie wallpaper that I found from Fremantle. And eventually I'm gonna do an island in the middle as well. I'm just running out of storage space, believe it or not. So I'm gonna get rid of that footstool and do a big bespoke island that's got lots of drawers in for things like jumpers and gym kit. This is my main guest bedroom, probably the most um, relaxing room in the house. Um, it's been really popular on Instagram, I think, because it's so light and bright. And again, it's got my typical approach to interior design where I've used a very neutral base, but introduced a more interesting um, accent colour. I'd say my favourite piece in the room is probably the bed. I love the headboard with the winged sides. It just feels really cosy. And these armchairs are a really special piece as well. They were um, previously in my in-laws house in Edinburgh. So yeah, I always always start with the fabrics for the colour and again I've done the same idea as I've done downstairs with having the two main upholstery pieces 
for the armchairs in a colour. And then I've kept the bed and the end of bed bench very neutral. Cushions are always a great way of adding more colour, as are table lamps. So I've got a lot of colour coming in through those and then the accessories as well, like the vases. Even the books have got some of the same colour green coming through. This is my husband's study. It's very much inspired by him. He's Scottish, so that's why we have the saltire flag. And he really loves sort of gentleman clubs cosy interiors, it's very sort of Ralph Lauren Scottish retreat. So we started with the wallpaper in here. Um, it's a coal and sun wallpaper and it's a great colour because this is a bright room so it can take it but all the mahogany antiques that we've got in here really stand out against it. I'd say the star piece in this room is um, the Louis Vuitton antique trunk. It's a vintage piece and I've seen it with one of my antiques dealers a few months previously and I loved it, but I wasn't quite sure how I was going to use it because it was very low, it was too low to be a coffee table. Um, but then I created a bespoke stand for it and it was the perfect size then um, to use as a side table. And I just love mixing in a few antiques to give it a bit of history. And that was a gift that I ended up giving Kevin. It was kind of a gift that I gave myself as well because it's for the house, but I called it his birthday present. I've mixed in some more contemporary pieces with the antiques. I didn't want to make it too old fashioned. So another piece that I really like is the round swivel chairs. I had them custom made. Made. They're from Robert Langford. And then I had them covered in this silky velvet.